Hey guys, welcome to another Lightroom specific video where I'm going to show you how I edited this photo from scratch. This is a photo that was requested a lot in my previous video where I asked which one of these edits you would like to see me break down. This is a knife photo taken in Tokyo and edited in kind of a, some would say cyberpunk or even a neon noir type of editing style. It's a very color dependent edit. A lot of the focus goes into editing the different colors. So anyway, let's just reset these edits and get started. So right away you can see that this has been shot quite underexposed. And let me just see if I can find the settings. I forgot how to do it on this version. Wow, I literally can't. Okay, here, information. I've shot it at 100th of a second f1.8, ISO 100. So definitely have a lot of data to work with on the Sony a7 Mark III. And we're gonna start the editing process by fixing the exposure so we can see what we're working with. You can see we can pull all the shadows very easily without losing any of the highlight details, which is a combination of an excellent camera and shooting a little bit underexposed to protect the highlights here. So anyway, let's just fix the exposure so we can see what's going on in the shadows. And the logic behind cropping this image is get rid of this distracting little bright spot here. So let's just do that and fix the horizon a little bit. Whoops. And that is a nice white screen crop that looks great on especially big screens. And we're gonna start or continue by revealing the highlight details. And then offsetting the lost contrast by upping the whites just a little bit. And you know what? We also wanna see a little bit of what's going on in the shadows, just a little bit more. So this is an initial part of the edit where I just kind of review the raw file and see what we can do with it. And again, in this case, we have a lot to work with. Then next, I know I want to make this photo blue. So just to kind of get the general look of this photo down, I'm just gonna go and decrease the temperature of this photo. But before we go any further with the editing of the colors, let's just fix the curve first. And for this photo, we're gonna do a pretty standard S curve with a couple of points, not doing too much contrast, just a little bit of a raised black point, which I do on all of my images basically, because I like the film like look and you know, I don't want to make my photos too different from each other. And also a little bit of the highlights. And now let's get to the color editing part. We're going to use color mix HSL. You could also use the color calibration feature. You know about this if you saw my previous video on the seven tips on Lightroom, but this is only a feature that is available on Lightroom Classic. And since we're working on the iPad here, it is not available. And anyway, I prefer to do things with the, the color mixer slash HSL, hue, saturation, luminance. And we're gonna adjust our primary colors in this photo. And there are primary colors are obviously blue and shades of red. And I'm a sucker for teal. This is a bit of a teal and orange edit also. So we're gonna make the blue more teal, something that I do quite a lot, but not too much, of course. Then let's play with the reds a little bit. I'm gonna change the hue of the reds as well. A little bit to the left to make the reds more red and slightly less saturated. I've left the oranges alone because I've adjusted the yellows as well. I've done the same thing with the yellows to make them more red. For this edit, I haven't done anything with the color grading slash split toning. And in the effects, this is a very simple edit. I've only decreased the clarity to get a nice kind of a dreamy glow, which complements this kind of a fantasy style or cyberpunk style edit, in my opinion. But because I like clarity when it comes to wet pavement, which is something that you probably know if you've seen any of my other videos, because I can't stop talking about this. I like to add some clarity into the pavement and that is best achieved with this linear gradient. So we're just gonna go and add the clarity effect here. We're gonna be pretty obvious with this effect. And looking at this, I think I've gone a little bit too harsh on the clarity decreasing, so I'm just gonna fine tune the edit just a little bit more. But I would say that is pretty much it. I would say that is a fairly simple process from start to finish, before and after. And that is literally all that I've done for this edit to achieve this cyberpunk style tone. Could have made it a little more complicated, but I feel like a lot of the features that I liked were already in the raw file. 
and uh, my job was easy after that. Now here's the next edit. This is not exactly a futuristic cyberpunk photo, but it does have some noir elements, mainly from the lighting. And it's another photo that was requested a lot in my previous video where I asked you which edit you would like to see next. So let's reset the edits and uh, recreate everything. Always forget where to actually reset it. <laughs> okay, original. So right away we can see that this is very underexposed as well. So that is the first thing to fix. And this is a fairly unique edit for me because I've actually made this photo warmer. Usually I like blue, but something about the blue hour itself makes me want to change it on this one. So again, we go to the temperature, but we're going to go the opposite direction and make the photo warmer. So we get this nice yellow lights. The next step is going to be to play with the curve of the photo. And let me just... Okay, again, we're going to be pretty repetitive with the curves. Just a little bit of an raised black point for overall consistency of my entire portfolio. And I just like the look of the faded shadows. But also because we're going to go and color grade this photo with the color grading feature. And we're going to add some greenish, yellowish, warm tones into the shadows. Just a little bit of it. And then let's jump over to HSL, color mix. And we're going to slightly change the hue of the orange and also the yellow. Now this is an edit that took me forever to come up with. So some of these steps may not make sense in hindsight. I'm simply looking at what I did in the process and just recreating it for you guys. Often I go to, you know, several different directions and make a couple of different versions of these photos and then wait a little bit and then look at it again and then see in addition with all the other photos taken on the same day, which edit direction looks like the best direction to go with. And in addition, we've also changed the luminance of the blue, which is the primary color of this photo, at least originally. So you can see the background tone slightly get brighter with this change. And if it was colder overall, the difference would be much bigger, but you know, it isn't. And oh my God, I've forgotten to do the crop. Let's make the subject central and go a little bit tighter. There's a distracting little dot, so I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> a bit of an oversized brush. Uh, this is sometimes annoying on this Lightroom mobile versions when you just can't get the brush proper. Did that work? No, it didn't fucking work. Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Erase the fucking dot. That actually worked. Anyway, let's move on. I've also done a spot edit by adding a gradient to the lower part because I thought it was a little bit distracting. So I've just simply decreased the shadows a little bit here in the lower part of the photo. You can see a slight effect drawing our eyes a little bit more into the subject. And now I think I would actually like to add a little bit more fade into the black point. So I'm gonna adjust this just a, just a touch. And I believe that is pretty much a recreation of the edit that we had originally. So from this into this, and that is the entire walkthrough of that process. So I think the key element of this one was raising the black point, adjusting the white balance, and then adding a little bit of greenish hue into the shadows. But again, obviously the photo already has those kind of noir elements in the very obvious backlight. That is what makes the photo in the first place. The kind of silhouette lighting with a little bit of fog can do wonders if you want to do this type of photography. Anyway, I hope that was interesting or helpful in some ways. If you like the trend of these editing tutorials on my channel, let me know by pressing the like button and leaving me a comment. And of course, press the bell notification so you don't miss any of these videos and help me become very famous on YouTube. I also, I'm going to do, you know, more photography related videos soon, um, especially after the lockdowns end or I can get out of this city for a bit. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.